To test for true sciatic pain, you want to lift your client's leg up at varying degrees, have them dorsiflex their ankle, and if pain shoots down to their foot, you've got sciatica, yada, yada, yada. This is also a great stretch for people who don't have sciatica. And most of the time, there's so many other things happening that show up like sciatica, feel like sciatica, and that people think are true sciatica. Don't get me wrong, when that nerve is pinched, it is awful, but there are so many elements that can complicate this. So today, we're gonna to talk about what those look like and how you can help. I pulled some pulp friction off the shelves for today's video for two reasons. Number one, I love the smell of citrus. And number two, there's gonna be quite a lot of friction in my work today. So if you wanna get your own pulp friction or any other deep tissue body butter, I will include the link in the description below. As promised, I'm starting off with a lot of friction and my first focus is the thoroughlumbar aponeurosis. I'm choosing this incredibly thick sheet of connective tissue as my starting point because if you look at the relationship between the connective tissue of the lower back that bleeds down into the connective tissue of the hip and the IT band, which anchors itself into the posterior femur and then bleeds all the way down through the knee into the connective tissue of the Achilles tendon and the plantar fascia, you could see how radiating pain down in this area can feel a lot like sciatica. I'm gonna talk more about this later, but for now I wanna bring your attention back up into the lower back. So I've frictioned through the thoroughlumbar aponeurosis and I'm starting to sink deeper into the QL and releasing a lot of the tension that can live here and mimic sciatic pain. There's a pretty infamous trigger point that can show up just above the iliac crest and just lateral to the low lumbar spine. And when this trigger point rears its ugly head, the radiating pain that accompanies it can be felt down through the hip and all the way down into the IT band. So right off the bat, we're starting to see how other soft tissue dysfunctions can lead people to think that they've actually got a sciatic nerve impingement. So as I sink down into this trigger point, I'm checking in to see if it's radiating down and to see if it feels like the pain that they're describing as sciatica. If it is that simple, you're already on your way to offering your clients some significant relief. Trigger points usually travel in groups, so be sure to check other aspects of the QL and the upper glute max and the upper glute medius for its partners in crime. But once you've done that, you wanna follow through and follow that line of radiation and ensure that all of these parts are functioning in a healthy way. So I'm warming up the IT band and getting ready to work it in a way that you might not expect. As I mentioned before, the IT band comes down and latches onto the backside of the femur. It's a bony landmark called the linea aspera that runs along the length of the posterior femur. And in order for this flat sheet of connective tissue to get there, it's got to wrap itself around the vastus lateralis and dive underneath the hamstrings. I've got a whole video on the IT band, where it is, what it does, and what it looks like. And I'll include that link in the description below. All that to say, this is why it looks like I'm working on the hamstrings, but in reality, I'm focused on the IT band. It's important to remember that trigger points give us a lot of good information about what's going on that's creating the dysfunction. So if you find those trigger points in the QL and in the upper glutes, and you follow that path down, there's a really good chance that what your client is feeling as sciatica is actually adhesions and discord among the soft tissue of the lateral and the posterior leg. So because fascia is fascia is fascia, all of this connective tissue is not gonna stop at the knee. It's gonna continue to go down, wrap around the muscles of the calf, create the Achilles tendon, and wind its way into the foot. So I'm not gonna stop my work with the IT band. I'm gonna come down and create a lot more friction through the gastrox and the soleus, through the Achilles tendon, and make sure that as I work, I'm generating a lot of heat. That's gonna be the key to helping this connective tissue start to melt and help the muscle tissues that are wrapped in this connective tissue start to function again. Whether or not the sciatic nerve is indeed pinched or there is just some trigger points creating some kind of mimicking pain, what happens down in the lower leg and the foot is real. And so I wanna take a little extra time down here. That's typically where most people feel sciatic pain radiate and bringing more blood flow back into these tissues is gonna be essential. I've brought my client's leg off the table, which helps the whole process in a couple different ways. Number one, the extension of the knee is gonna stretch out all the tissues of the posterior leg. And number two, without the bolster in the way, she can now dorsiflex her ankle, which is gonna just increase that stretch even more. This is a take on a reciprocal inhibition so that when she fires the tibialis anterior, all the muscles in the calf are gonna to start to relax a little bit more. And then the work that I'm doing through the calf and connecting that up through the leg and the hip is gonna be a little more profound. 
As I friction through the ankle and the foot, I'm going to repeat some stuff you might have heard me say before. If you communicate to your client about all the things that you're doing while you're doing them, they're going to have a deeper understanding of your intention and they're going to have a better idea of what's going on for them anatomically and physiologically. All of that is a win-win for both people involved. And you guys thought I was never going to get to the hip. Here I am at the hip. I've got my client out from under the sheets and I've got her clothed because I want to talk about how to do a lot of this work without having to fumble with the drape. So press pause, get your draping down and let's go. Eventually you're going to need to sink down underneath the glute max and the glute medius and one of the best ways to break that barrier is with an active engagement technique. So as I compress down into the upper glutes with a fist, I'm having her pull her leg into extension, which fires the muscles I'm targeting. And as they're contracting, my compression stays strong, focusing down toward her thigh, not down toward the table. And then when she relaxes down, I'm able to sink down into those deeper muscles that are more directly affecting the sciatic nerve. So just to be clear, the sciatic nerve does indeed exit the low lumbar spine and winds its way down through the posterior hip, most notably deep to the glute muscles and dipping underneath the piriformis. So as I start to compress here, I want to be really careful that I don't actually hit that nerve. Stay in communication, make sure that whatever pain they're feeling is good pain and not bad pain, and using an elbow here is a great way to find some depth. So as you can see, I'm bending my elbow, and when I do that, I make a sharper point of contact. When my elbow is more open, the pressure is more broad, and then as I bend my elbow, that focused compression sinks down a lot deeper. I talked about trigger points being one way that sciatic pain can show up and not really be sciatica, and the piriformis pinching down on the sciatic nerve is another way that can happen. I'll get to more specific piriformis work in a second, but first I want to reiterate the importance of softening the more superficial tissues, specifically the glute max. So the glute max comes down and inserts into the IT band, but part of the glute max also comes down and inserts into the gluteal tuberosity, which is a bony landmark on the top of the posterior femur. So I'm going to take some time and really focus on that. I used extension earlier to work with the glute max, but this time I'm going to use external rotation. So with my fingertips, as I apply pressure into this attachment site, I'm having her turn her knee out to the side so that when she relaxes down, I can sink in even deeper, create a little friction, and help release those attachments and start to uncomplicate a lot of the chaos that can happen in the lower half of the glutes and the lower half of the deep six. If you look at it this way, there are a lot of fibers that are going from medial to lateral, from the sacrum, out to the gluteal tuberosity, out to the greater trochanter, creating this lateral rotation. So not only am I affecting the lower part of the glute max, but I'm also starting to sink in and relieve a lot of those lateral rotators that can influence not only the sciatic nerve, but can also mimic sciatic nerve pain. I'm finally getting into the piriformis itself, and in order to do that, I really want to make sure that she's letting go of her hip. So I'm flexing her knee and I'm going to lift her entire leg up off the table and let her knee swing like a pendulum. This can be a really effective way to get your client to release all of the muscles that can hold onto the hip. And once she's done that, I can start levering her lower leg back and forth, which is going to soften and lengthen the piriformis itself. This is a basic pin and stretch for the piriformis and I'm going to add a little bit of a twist at the end, but just to walk you through it, as I shorten this muscle, I'm dropping her ankle towards her other leg. This is softening the muscle, using my right hand in a soft fist to pin it down. And then as I lengthen the muscle out by pulling her foot out towards me, I'm creating that extra length in this muscle and opening up those constrictions and relieving those adhesions and starting to allow for a little more space so that the sciatic nerve can pass through without feeling pinched. Just to demonstrate an AET in this area, I'm going to sink down and have my client push her ankle out towards me against my resistance. So I'm using my left hand to push against her ankle and using my right hand to sink down so that when she lets go of that contraction, I'm creating a lot of friction, I'm sinking in a little deeper, and I'm affecting essentially all of those deep six rotators and helping that sciatic nerve find a lot more space to pass through. 
So while I'm here, I'm going to do a quick pin and stretch of the glute medius. I've got my right thumb hooked into the glute medius, and as I push her ankle towards her other leg, I'm stretching out the fibers of the glute medius and also creating a cross fiber friction. So as I sink down, those fibers are moving around and I'm able to access all those little nuanced aspects of each little fiber within that muscle. This is a great opening technique. I've got my client in a prone position and I've positioned her leg into a figure four. So this is gonna open up a lot of the posterior musculature, but my main objective here is to create space. When you've got a pinched nerve, there are tissues that are compressing down on that. So my goal is to reverse that. I'm using both of my hands and I'm really grabbing the top of the femur. My thumbs are positioned just above the greater trochanter and I'm starting by sinking down into those attachments with my thumb and then leaning back and creating length right at the attachment site and throughout the hip as a whole. If you do try this move, make sure that your fingers are placed at the top of the quads and the top of the hamstrings and apply a little compression in there. It helps to distract away from anything that might feel painful in the hip and starts to feel a little more relieving to the area in general. So keep that in mind as you start to work a little more specifically. I've got my right thumb sinking a little more deeply into the piriformis and the attachments of the deep six lateral rotators. And as I do that, I'm using my left hand to lift her knee and soften those muscles so I can sink in and create even more change. But the distraction of my left hand on her knee and the movement of her hip in general helps to alleviate her focus away from anything that might feel painful, but you know is therapeutic. Regardless of whether or not the piriformis is doing the pinching of the sciatic nerve or whether or not there is an actual impingement, you wanna focus on all of the muscles around the hip and inhibit any guarding responses. So I've got my left hand sunken into the TFL and I love this work in this area because this is a really softened position for the TFL. So as I sink in with my left hand, I'm using my right hand to push the hip up even higher creating some movement and even more softness so that the depth I'm able to get to in this often hard to access area is even greater. If this is the first video you've ever seen of mine, you need to know that I love side lying and I love it for a couple of reasons. I'm about to do a lot of active engagement techniques and putting my client in this position allows for a lot more range of motion. I'm starting in on the upper glutes, which I already showed you with her prone, but in this position, I'm using my left hand to stabilize her upper hip, sinking into those tissues with my right hand, and then asking her to extend her leg straight and swing it back towards me. This is gonna engage the tissues a little bit differently, and you're gonna find that you're gonna get an entirely different response from your client. Working my way laterally, I'm gonna use the same idea into the glute medius. So I'm sinking in, asking my client to extend her leg straight, and then having her lifted up away from the table into abduction. As she does this, I'm really sinking in. You can use your elbow if that's a little bit easier. Either way, you're working into these tissues from a new direction and accessing what the hip can do from a different perspective. Continuing on my path, I'm working my way now into the anterior hip, into the TFL, and what this muscle does mostly is medial rotation. So I'm having my client kick her leg out straight, and as I sink in with my fingers, having her point her knee down towards the table. This activation is gonna create the same response so that when she lets go, I can sink in a little bit deeper, but at the same time, it's also creating an inhibiting response in the posterior hip. So when the front of the hip activates, the back of the hip has to let go in order for this to happen. So this technique works twofold and is especially productive. All of these techniques are great for sciatic nerve impingement, piriformis syndrome, and anything that's gonna show up and mimic sciatic pain. Just make sure when you're done that you work your magic into the lower leg and the foot as well, because as we say in the bodywork world, it's all connected. Hey guys, really quickly before you go, you have been asking me for online CEU classes, for online continuing education and I have been listening. So I'm starting to formulate them. I'm starting to work towards making that happen. If you could write in the comments below what your top CEU class would be if you could request one, I wanna hear it. Even if you have like a series that you would wanna request, an entire course that, that you wanna see online, I wanna hear what you guys are wanting. So let me know, you've been talking, I've been listening, I wanna hear more. This video, like all of my other videos, is made possible because of my Patreon supporters. I'm always striving to make content that is educational, effective, and entertaining. You will forever have my gratitude for your help in this process.